Before we begin this video, I'd just like to take a moment to dedicate this review to the late John Total Biscuit Bain, who sadly died early this year after a battle with bowel cancer. I will admit that I didn't watch Total Biscuit much and don't know much about him, but even so, this isn't something I can ignore. Total Biscuit was a respected member of the gaming community, so out of respect for him and his fans, this dedication is the least I can do to honour him. Godspeed, fellow critic. You've left your mark on the internet, and you've inspired many to leave theirs. And with that, I thank all watching for your patience and respect, and I very much hope that you enjoy this review. The contributions of a little company called id Software to the games industry are, let's face it, pretty massive. In fact, I'd even say that so monumental is their impact that you'd have had to have lived under a space rock and played on nothing but a broken ZX Spectrum for the past 40 odd years to have not heard of them. But for the sake of said rock dwellers, I shall do a little explaining. id Software is a games company best known for the Wolfenstein, Doom and Quake series, all iconic game series which broke ground in and popularised not only the first person shooter genre, but in Quake's case, online multiplayer gaming as a whole. Games such as Duke Nukem, Half-Life and even high profile titles like Call of Duty all owe their roots to Doom and Quake. It should come as not much of a surprise, therefore, that when id Software's latest IP, Rage, came out in 2011, it wore its heritage very much on its sleeve, boasting very proudly to be from the developers of Doom and Quake. So with a sequel set to come out in 2019, I thought I'd dust Rage off to see just how worthy it is of wearing its forefather's name so openly. So witness me bloodbags as I ride the fury road to the dusty wastelands of Rage to ask the big question. What's so good about... A little disclaimer before we begin. When reviewing this game, I'm going to be considering its DLC, those being the Scorchers and the Wasteland Sewer missions, as part and parcel of the game. And either way, if you do get this game, I heavily recommend you buy the former anyway. But as I often do, I'll start off with the game's story. It looks something like this. In anticipation of an incoming asteroid collision, the governments of the world initiate the Eden Project, no relation at all to the biome complex in Cornwall, with the intention of repopulating the Earth following the impact using several underground arcs, in which several humans are cryogenically frozen. The player character awakens approximately 106 years later, in which time following the impact, the world has become a wasteland, with civilization rebuilding amidst the rubble while avoiding attacks from bandits, mutants, and the oppressive authority, whose goal is to seize control of the entire Earth. That's the backstory, at least, and it's promising, but unfortunately the same cannot be said about the actual story itself. The story picks up with you, as former US Marine Nicholas Rain, waking up from one of the arcs and being rudely introduced to the game's world. And after that, there's not much to say story-wise. You do some errands for a few people, you leave them behind eventually, you run some more errands for some more people, and generally speaking, nothing really happens, or at least nothing engaging. Sure enough, things do happen, but there's very little reason for the player to actually care about those things, and genuinely, with a story this by the numbers and uneventful, it's actually quite hard to make any kind of meaningful commentary, because there's nothing of any real worth in the story to actually comment on. Another criticism I'd have about this game is the supposed open world. The Steam store page's description of an expansive world open to explore is perhaps an overstatement, since in actual fact the world is quite small, and there's not that much to do in it besides doing the story missions and picking up a rather meagre amount of side quests, which for the most part have quite little in the way of depth, and usually just end up amounting to little other than extra objectives to do alongside story missions, menial quests for a little extra dough, or bog standard collectibles, plus perhaps a couple of minigames here and there. It's an open world in the very broadest and most technical sense of the term, in that it's not 100% linear and you do all the moving between game locations on your own, but compared to games like Fallout or even Sniper Ghost Warrior 3 where you could walk for about 5 minutes in any given direction and find a whole load of stuff to discover, in Rage it's much more constricted. I suppose you can theoretically do the minimal side quests, DLCs and racing, which I'll get to later, at your own pace, but besides them, the game doesn't really have much of a precedent for players not following the story. In fact, much of the DLC can't be accessed at all until you've reached certain points in the story. As a result, there is very little to actually do in the supposedly expansive open world, even with the DLCs. However, and this is a very big however, uh -huh, see, I dodged the immature joke this time, the story and arguably open world is not where this game's enjoyment is to be found. The story may be bland and the world may not be as open as the Steam page lets on, but what the game therefore lacks in meaningfulness, it more than makes up for in pretty much everything else. 
To start with, let's take the setting. It's very, very obvious that id sunk a lot of time and love into making Rage's world look and feel really, really good. Everything from the sounds you hear in the remnants of civilization you wander through, how enemies react differently depending on where they're shot, the way flying enemies spin out of control if they're killed, even such commonplace and inconsequential things as the animations for the characters and all the little tiny things like that just make the game feel and look just that much better. Honestly, I don't think I've seen character animations this fluid or expressive in very many other games, especially from this era, bearing in mind that this came out in the same year as Skyrim and only one year after Mass Effect 2. And the area designs, oh great Thor in Asgard. Far from being copy-pasted generic locations the likes of Fallout 4 or Skyrim, every single area in Rage has its own theme and design, from the British petrol head wasted hiding out in their old garage, to the fiery airborne scorchers and the Mayan ruins they hide in, and even the civilised wellsprings wild western theming and subway town's seedy confines. All of it is just so gorgeously put together and gives the world and setting a certain life that other games don't really have. I could wax lyrical about the settings and attention to detail for flipping ages though, so let's move on to the gameplay. After all, it is where the bulk of the enjoyment of this game is, and you'll see why. As has been established, this is a first-person shooter by id Software, and given their aforementioned repertoire, it should stand to reason that this game is about one thing. Shooting, shooting, and more shooting, and the basic mechanics of a first-person shooter should probably not need explaining in any amount of detail. So you may ask, what makes this game different? Well, effectively, it boils down to this. If there's one thing that id Software really know how to do, it's making the very act of shooting in and of itself fun, and it's due to, in my opinion, the way they do the guns in their games. A shooter game can have guns that go bang, and that's pretty much a given, but id goes one step further in that they take extra care not to just make the guns look and sound good, but also feel really good to use. And this is something they've done for a long time, hence why games like Quake 1 and 2 still hold up. So before you've got very far in Rage, you'll already have a quite respectable and diverse collection of guns with which to pump lead into your enemies, and as per id tradition, each and every one of them feels and sounds absolutely fantastic. To be honest, it's hard to convey using words, so here's some footage so you can see and hear for yourself. Rocket launcher. On top of this, the weapons can also be upgraded with various different ammo types, kind of a la Bioshock. For some guns, it's your standard more powerful, more expensive bullets, but there are also some more interesting additions. Your shotgun, for instance, can take three different kinds of buckshot, that being standard shot, pop rockets that effectively turn it into a grenade launcher and are really, really fun to spray everywhere, and a pulse shot, which turns it into an EMP launcher. The standard pistol, which you get at the start, also has kill bursts, which effectively turn it into a pepper gun, or as the game itself describes them, bullets within bullets within bullets which all fire at once. Another example is the crossbow, which can be outfitted with various different kinds of bolts, including an electric one for toasting enemies in water, and a mind control bolt that lets you briefly control enemies, then blow them up. And then you have the nail gun. This is my personal favourite. Obviously, it lets you shoot nails, but it can also be used as a wall-penetrating railgun or, and I freaking love this one, you can use it to launch great big rods of rebar at your enemies. There are few guns in games that look, feel, and sound as glorious as this particular ammo type for this particular gun. You can take your sniper rifles and your crossbows, I'm pinning my opponent's heads to walls with a freaking rebar launcher. As they say, there ain't no kill like overkill. Furthermore, different ammo types also work differently against different types of enemies. Some may require more powerful ammo, some can be weakened with EMP weapons, and others can easily enough be polished off with a good buckshot to the face. Combined with the differing tactics and weaponry choices of the different enemies, this makes for a surprisingly tactical experience as you work out what ammo type will do the most damage to the specific enemy faction you're facing. And that's not even the end of it. On top of the guns, it has also gracefully provided players with an assortment of side weapons and items they can use, not limited to a couple of types of grenades, stim packs which boost your energy, exploding bomb cars, portable turrets, and wing sticks, which are effectively boomerangs made out of machetes, which I love to bits. And how could I not? They're freaking boomerangs made out of machetes. What more do you want? And to cap the whole thing off, when you die, you get a little mini game which lets you revive yourself and restore some of your health, and zap nearby enemies while you're at it. 
Suffice it to say, Rage's gunplay is gloriously fun in a way that only id or perhaps machine games could pull off. Lots of good looking, good sounding and good feeling guns spiced up with a panoply of extra weapons and items clashes with lots of unique enemies to create a truly cathartic combination. And that is just one half of it. Between the shooting and the marvelling at the scenery, you'll also get the chance to drive Mad Maxi vehicles around the world as I said before. And after it made the very act of shooting fun, you can bet your last penny they did the same to the driving. There's a few vehicles to choose from of varying degrees of robustness and let me tell you right now, driving them is a load of fun. They all handle much the same but that handling is really fluid and nice and each car is equipped with a nitro boost which feels so good to fire off all in one go. I know I've done that a few times already, but that was just another thing that needed to be seen to be believed. But aside from just driving them around, Rage also puts its cars to good use by way of adding a little racing minigame on the side which sees you, for example, speeding around a desert canyon in a souped up buggy in pursuit of a track record, racing alongside other people while keeping them at bay with your minigun, and smashing your opponents up with rockets and slamming into them whilst competing for capture points inside a rocky basin. In all honesty, with a bit of spit and polish and some more content, these races could be a game in and of themselves. They're so such an adrenaline rush and they serve as a great excuse to play with your super fun to drive cars and an excellent distraction from the equally gorgeous gunplay. Furthermore, winning races nets you some racing certificates which can be used to buy guns, power-ups and armour for your cars, allowing you to take on bandits in car to car combat, which is just as fun as the races and the gunplay, although the car weaponry is far less varied than the main guns, being limited to a minigun, rocket launcher and later on in the game a pulse weapon. To be honest though, this is not that big an issue owing to the repeatedly aforementioned funness that comes with their use and the weaponry is again supplemented with power-ups like mines, shields and auto repair systems. Genuinely, I have not had this much fun driving a car in a game since Burnout Paradise. The driving, the Mad Maxi car combat, the races, the entire mechanic revels in its funness and it's the exact same kind of fun that id puts into its shooting, making for a matchup which very few other games get entirely right. At this point there isn't really much more I can say so I'll round off here and need I really say more? Rage is, as we have seen, an absolutely gorgeous game. If I may say so myself, it could even be called a better Mad Max game than the official Mad Max game. It has the cars, it has the guns, it has the action, what more do you want? I will ultimately admit though that its enjoyability depends largely on what you want from it. If you're looking for a deep story experience with a vast will to explore and stories to uncover then this is probably not the game for you. If, however, you enjoyed games the likes of Doom and Quake and are looking for a similar experience, then Rage will be happy to provide you with a generous helping of over-the-top, rip-roaring action that will surely whet one's appetite for death and destruction, served in a gilded bowl of beautiful design and attention to detail to make it seem just that bit more alive. Should you buy it? Absolutely. If you like shooters, this game gets my wholehearted recommendation and I am hyped as all hell to see what Rage 2 has to offer. I've been Deuterium the Sentient Mattress, and that is what's so good about Rage. Id Software, never stop being you, you lovable little violent psychopath you. And that is all for this episode. Thank you very much for watching. Be sure to like, share and subscribe. Join my Discord server, link below. Leave a comment if you liked it. Leave a comment if you didn't like it. Either way, it means a lot to me. Be sure to ring the little bell by the subscribe button so you'll know what I've uploaded. And since, as I said at the beginning, this video is dedicated to Total Biscuit, be especially sure as well to donate to the John Bain Memorial Fund in his memory. Link also in the description. Thank you again for watching, and I'll see you all next time. Ta-ta!